This is the story of Avalea. Well, this is fun. In our last tutorial, we were looking at how to create a mouth and eyes that could be animated. And we got into the idea of shape keys. Now we are going to look at how to synchronize those movements with audio. Because in this little animation that I've done, I've recorded my daughter's uh, singing la 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 and when we play it this is the story of Amelie still music and stuff to it so that question for this animation is let me um, escape out and let's try this again with the camera view this is the story of Amelie right so that's the basic animation and we want her mouth to be going la, 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 la. So how do we do it? Well, here is where the video editor part of Blender comes in really handy. So here's the video editor, and it has an F-curve area up here, which we'll talk about in a second. It has a viewing port. It has a video editor. Uh, area video sequence editor and then it has a timeline and you're familiar with the timeline um, we have put into the video sequence editor some sequences of uh, audio and I have here my daughter uh, and you can see the actual waveform because down here I put draw waveform over in the properties area for that strip. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see it. And when she's walking, you would have no idea what to do. So you want to click on Draw Waveform. This track here, I don't need to draw the waveform for. This is, um, I'm not sure what this is. Let me turn the volume down and let's see what remains here for a second. It's the story of Avalea. OK, so. This one here is the background music, and the background music I'm not syncing to, so I don't need to see that waveform. This is my own voice saying this is the story of Avalea, and there it is. This is the story like, of Avalea. Okay, so these are just MP3s and MP4s that I pulled in using the add sound menu and then they go in there and then you play around with the placement of them and so the volumes are here you can see the volume so this volume of my daughter I put down to point two this one of the music the volume is zero for some reason because it came in really loud, I'm not sure. Oh no, because I turned it off, that's why. So let me put that back up to one, whoa. Okay, so now when we play it, there it is. So that's that one, and there's my voice, volume one. But um, she was pretty loud, so I put it down a little bit. Okay, she's four, what do you know? Loud. Um, to animate the mouth to this, I had created these objects which, let me go to the side view here, these objects which I put onto the face, these two circles for the eyes and this mouth, and I had parented them to the face so that if we go back to the default scene and you look at where the mouth is. It is parented to the head and the head is here and there's the mouth and there are the eyes. So you have this hierarchy that shows you 
the object, and I have the left leg. Everything's parented to the hips, as you can see. The left leg is parented to the hips, and the right leg is parented to the hips. The torso is parented to the hips. Then the torso is a parent in turn to the head, and then the head is a parent to the eyes and the mouth, while the torso is also a parent to the arms, as you can see over there. And when you click on them, you can select them from there. That's in the default view. So we'll go to the video editing view and set up to do this animation that we want to sync up. I'm going to do something a little different than Blender allows. I'm going to create uh, two different windows. I'm going to, actually I don't need this properties window at all, but I want to drag here and create, oops, didn't mean to do that doing too many of these. Oh. Okay. I'm going to drag out this way and I'm going to make this into a dope sheet for keyframe animations. And you can see already, <clears throat> let me make sure this is on camera view so we stay with the character. So we, um, <clears throat> We have all of the animations for the arms and the legs in here, and we have the F curve editor, which we'll get to a little later on. And the other thing that we can do is we would like to see, we don't need the timeline, so I'm going to raise this up a little bit. This part here, I'm going to expand so I can see just my daughter's voice and then move that. Okay, that's all I want to see is her voice, la, 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 la. And when you go to, the, when the, this is the default setting for the video editor, playback, you want to check audio scrubbing. If that's unchecked, you won't hear anything. And if you come up here and you do audio scrubbing on, then you can scrub through and hear it. The other thing you should check is AV sync so that the audio visual will sync. And down here, I'm going to go to a view which is of the properties. And in the properties menu, I'm going to click on the shape key, the vertices thing, so I can have a mouth animation. Remember in the last tutorial, we had created the mouth and then we created a shape key for it. So I can delete these and show you once again how to do that. So you're you're clicking on the the uh, object data. You've got modifiers here, object modifiers. This is object data. This layer next to materials, there's materials. You're clicking on that and you're going down to you're going down to shape keys. You've got the mouth selected, otherwise you'd be, let me get rid of that shape key. So, so as you would have um, nothing there. So you have the mouth selected and I've named it mouth animation. And I go to my shape keys area and I add a shape key, which is the basic one, which we don't mess with. And then I add another one which is the keyframe area. And I usually make it mouth animation keyframes. Okay. And I have that, and I move down a little further to the value, and the value is set at zero right now. And nothing happens when I move it yet. If you recall from the last tutorial, the way that you animate the uh, value of shape keys is you tab into the edit mode and then you scale in Z and close the mouth and then you tab out of that. And now when you change the value from zero to one, the mouth closes. Okay. So this gives us our la la la. We're just doing a basic open close thing here. And 
the way that you do that, but you, you see here what's happened is the F key has now, whoops, has now got a green, um, a green line in it. And that green line So the, um, the next thing you want to do is go to your dope sheet and you can see in the dope sheet that there's various buttons down at the bottom. I only want to look at, I don't want to see the animation for the right arm, the left arm, the hips and all that. I just want to see the mouth. So I click on the arrow, only include channels relating to selected objects and data. And now I will just see the mouth keyframes and when here's the exciting part of it let me move this up a little bit I will go back to the beginning and note that she has an open mouth when she starts which is right when it gets to this part of the waveform she's closing her mouth a little bit because the volume has gone down. So here is where I would put in a keyframe with a value of one, which is the closed mouth position. And then I would have her open her mouth when this part opens here. So here is her mouth closed. And what I'll do is I'll hover my cursor over the relative value of one, maybe it shouldn't close all the way here actually. Let's bring it down because she doesn't go completely silent. Let's bring it to about, it looks about halfway. So let's bring it to 0.5 and having it around 0.5, I don't care, 0.565. Then hit the I key with the cursor over this and that sets a keyframe. And you can see here in the F view, there is an indication with yellow that it's down at about 0.5 when I zoom in. All right. And <clears throat> that's where the keyframe is set, <clears throat> indicating that I should have set a keyframe at the beginning of zero, <clears throat> because otherwise the computer thinks that that's where we're starting. So I go back to that, set a keyframe, hover the cursor over it, hit I. Now I've got a keyframe at zero that has a value of zero, which is when the mouth is completely open. And then when we get to this part down here, the mouth closes, but now it needs to open again. So you could then go to here and open the mouth by going back to zero and then click on I and you see what's happened up here in the F curve. La, when we come over to this part, she closes her mouth. So once again, since the cursor is over the part where her mouth is closed most of the way. We can now come in and drag here and close the mouth to the level that we want it closed. Let's go about 873.873 and set a keyframe there. And then of course over here it's going to open again. But Going through it and using the value area in the shape keys is a bit of a pain, and that's where the F, the F uh, curve editor really is fun because we can actually do much of our work up in here. So we see that her mouth needs to be open here 
And what we can do is add a keyframe there. You can also go into the window here and go I, but that only gives you location and relative scale. So you still come down here and you let's see, open your mouth all the way. Put in that node and then go to each of the places that you want to make a keyframe. It should start to get, uh, the mouth should start to close here. Put in a keyframe and then by here it's closed a little more. Hit I, and then here it's closed all the way. Hit I, and it stays closed until it opens here. And you can also use the number keys and go zero and open it up and hit a keyframe there. So that now, that can open abruptly enough. So here's where you start working with the F-curve editor. This point here is where it should be all the way open but it needed to open more abruptly than that. So I can grab this vertex in the F-curve editor. Oh, that's not working out. Use a bounding box. There we go. And drag that over so that now it opens right where I want it to because I'm using the G key and moving this over to the point where I want the mouth to actually open. Oh, it seems like I lost my last key. Let me move this down. It's all the way open. Let me grab this and move it over. And then it's a bit tricky, but you keep an eye on what's going on in the uh, waveform and you manipulate the points accordingly. Here again, we have to bring it down. It's, um, so it starts to get more interesting when you work with the F-curve editor. If you look at the dope sheet over here, you can actually see that, yes, there are uh, keyframes being put in, and you can manipulate these keyframes. There they are. Just kind of make the window a little bigger to see them better. And this would also help you with the timing of the keyframes if you look here and you look down at the waveform. So you can shift those around for more accuracy later, as you do in most animations. But the F-curve is the one that's going to tell you whether the value is up or down, whether it's 0 or 1 or in between for the mouth. And the way that you can actually control the points in the F-curve is by using control key and, uh, and click. So when I go over to the next place where I want the mouth to close slightly, which is right here, then... I can go to that green line intersection and I can control click 
with the left mouse button and then I hit the G key and I can say, well, I want the mouth to close slightly here at this point. But then when I get to here, I want it to open again so I can control click and make a new point there and I can open the mouth again and open it up and then move over to the place where it definitely closes here. And if you want an abrupt mouth close, very abrupt, then what you should do is make another keyframe. So come in here and control click on that and then go right next to it to where the mouth definitely closes into silence and make yet another. So zoom in and make another control point, control click there, and then drag that steeply up. And then you have, drag that right up there. Then you get an abrupt closing right there. An abrupt close. And we'll ignore that little bit of waveform there. Here, Oh, by the way, I should point out to you, the reason I'm able to scroll through and hear what she's saying is because I have in this, I need to go actually back to the timeline down here. That is what makes you go through this and do it. Now, when I come here, I again want an abrupt uh, opening of the mouth. So I'm going to first start a few frames before and I'm going to control click here and make it a closed mouth, zoom in with my scroll wheel and go a couple of frames in and control click and make the open mouth, it's abrupt and drag it down. Whoops. Using the G key. And now it's fully open over that. Here she begins to close it just a little bit. So as the procedure, uh, as I've mentioned it, the procedure is to now give us a, well here it's sort of gradual, so we can use a curve. And that's the nice thing about the curves is that it is a grad, it curves let you do things gradually. So if I shift click here, and I gradually close the mouth a little bit here. Then when I get over to here, she's opening up again. And I will click here, control click, and drag the curve down to open the mouth. So it opens there. And then it gets a little bit lower the curve down in here. So again, I control click and I close the mouth down a little bit, only to over in the middle here, open it up a little bit. So let's click on that, then open the mouth a bit there. But at this point, it's going to close completely. So I'm going to click, shift click here, and then come over to where it's completely closed. And so it's not shift click, it was control click, and control click here, and move that to a complete closure. And that stays closed until here. So now I click, it's a lot of zooming you do. I click here, control, left click, and then for the next opening, come in and shift click, sorry, control click again, and drag this straight down to close to open the mouth 
for this last la that she says. And then click here, control click, and then there's going to be silence right after that. And so I come again once up here and I make a point and this point is going to go all the way to closed again. And then her mouth will stay closed. All right, so what that ends up playing like when we look at it, so I'm having trouble dragging this down, is, let me get the timeline to move down a bit. All right. So now when we play the animation or scroll through it, So when we are looking at this <clears throat> play from the beginning using Alt A, this is the story of Ava Lee. And once again, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. And let me hit A so it's not plain. This is the story. Of now there was that little glitch at the end where she goes bleh. That right there, and we might as well animate it. We have that possibility. So we can again control click here, zoom in a bit, move the cursor a little bit over. Control click, drag it to the open position of the mouth. And then when we play it, that, but of course, since the, the piece ends, we probably want to make it that at into a quick open and close of the mouth. And have her end up closed. So I click, I click, my mouse is having trouble here, and then bring this abruptly to a close. Now when we play the animation, at the beginning. This is the story of Ava Lake. Okay. So that's the mouth. And let's save it. To give her more realism, we should also add in an eye blink. And it's the same procedure. You click on the eyes which for me are one set of things, and decide if she goes la, 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 she, I'm going to have her blink her eyes when her mouth is closed, la, 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 and then she blinks. So here I can um, set the keyframe, but you can't just go in and click here and get a keyframe because there's nothing to click on. You have nothing, insert keyframe I, but there's no, nothing to insert it on. So once again, you have to go down here and go to properties and scroll up a little bit and this is called circle. I'm going to rename it eyes in the vertex editor. And the shape keys, I'm going to add a shape key. And that creates the basis. And then add it again to create my key. And then I can call this 
I blink key. Now I have something I can work with. There's the value. I need to create my first value at the beginning of the sequence. So go back to the beginning of the sequence. And at the beginning of the sequence, we have her eyes open, which is fine. That's a value of zero. So hit I as the cursor is hovering over the value bar. And that creates the first keyframe, which you can see here in the dope sheet area at frame zero. And it created this yellow line here. Now you can work with the yellow line only in the F curve editor. And I want her eyes open in the beginning until she gets to here. And then I want her eyes to blink. So to make them blink, I'm going to insert by using control click another open eye. So I have this uh, open, open. Then it, once I want it to close just after that. So I'm going to control click here and drag this up to the value of one. The problem is we didn't do the editing of the shape key. So the value one means nothing right now. So what I have to do there, I have to go to tab and then S for scale in Z and close the eyes. I also like to do S, X and scale them when they close out a bit so that they squint a little bit and then tab out. And that should be the value of one. And there's the value of zero like that. That means that when we are back here at the beginning, her eyes are open at zero and then they close when the value is up to here. It's a little hard right now because we're looking, I've got to hit zero to go to the camera view because I have the camera tracking the head and now you can see that. But a blink is very quick. So unless you want it to be a squint, you've got to come in here and immediately after you have the closing, create a control and get those eyes to open up again. And you can manipulate the curve for how quick you want them to open. If you want it to be very quick, then it's just a drop up and down. And if you want a more gradual opening, then you'd have to narrow this although that becomes problematic. That's pretty quick. Okay. Now, you can continue to do that and manipulate again, but here's where you want to also use the dope sheet because the dope sheet now helps us to, whoops, and I lost that. Where did I lose that? There is the line. Where are we? Somehow got dragged way down there. Um, we have these keyframes here, and there they are. So this was the one where we started with the eyes open. Then we have the eyes open again. Then we have close open, as you can see when I click on it. That sequence of open close open for the quick blink doesn't have to be um, you don't have to read try to redo it because what you can do now is hit B select that and copy by doing shift D and then you can move another blink wherever you would like along the timeline and I want to pad it here because you can see this is an area where uh, she's not talking. I wanted to blink her eyes. And then I hit the G key and simply move it over into that area. And then I can do that again. If I want her to blink in this region here, I can hit Shift D and move those into that region. And then have her blink once at the end by hitting Shift D and making a blink there. 
And now when I look at the camera view, look at the camera view, he's blinking, here's a blink, there's a blink, there's a blink. And you have this eye blink. Now the eye blink may be too quick, and if it is, you can manipulate that either in the F curve editor, or you can even manipulate it here in the dope sheet editor by hitting G and dragging the dragging the open eye keyframe out and keeping the, uh, the space between the open eye and the closed eye frame. And that may give you a better, a better blink. This may be too abrupt. So the dope editor is tied to the F curve editor. And as you manipulate one, you can see when I'm on the dope curve moving, if you look to the left, you can see how it affects the F curve editor. And that gives us a much more effective animation. So we can play and this is the story of Ava And there we go. So that's a lot of fun. And then we've got that animation done. We can leave the video editor and go back to our default and turn on our other layers that we prepared. There is our camera layer with our plane over here and I've put in a couple of trees into the landscape. There's my little trees. And now she will of course walk through and the camera's animated for that. So that when I go to camera view I will see, and let me look at the uh, view here as material. We can see this. All right. And hit Alt A. This is the story of Ava Lake. Is that going to be too dark? Well, you can look at the render view, see what it'll render as, and this is the story. When we get to the end, render doesn't, uh, it's very slow, so use your material view to get to the point you want, you want to see by then hitting, uh, going to the render view now. No, it's perfectly light. So, you get a sense of what the animation is going to look like. using render view and now it's time to uh, to render this so when I render it what I want to do is I want to go into the um, into the camera area here in properties and I'm going to render it at h.264 um, it's going to be a format of MPEG4 codec h24 and I want to make sure that the default of audio codec at none is set to MP3. I found that it is good to render from the video sequence editor. For some reason, that works better for me. But if you're going to do that, then once again, you want to make sure your settings are working. Encoding here is encoding MPEG-4 and mp3 out of codec. Okay, so we're ready to go. And then go ahead and render animation. And it will start going through each of the frames and render them. It's frame eight, frame nine. So that's like paint drying. So we'll let that render and then we'll come back and show you how it looks. So now it's rendered all 344 frames and the output was sent to a folder that is in Q 
Helion's models, and it should be here. Uh, the layer. The way that you know that is you look at, go into your default area, come over to properties, and look at the output. And the output here is, as you can see here, users. Documents, Lego software, killings, Avalea. And what it does when it renders is it uh, tells you the number of frames it renders. It gives it that name. So it should be this one here. This is the story of Avalea. And there it is. And so we have that render. And then we can uh, bring it into Camtasia and manipulate it and put titles and things on it, as we'll show now. This is the story of Avalea.